call now on uh, this Tuesday edition of the Sportsmax Zone. The 2024 European Championship confirmed its first finalist earlier on Tuesday with Spain booking their spot in the showpiece game scheduled for Sunday. La Roja continued their good form against France in their semi-final with moments of brilliance by the 16-year-old Lamine Yamal, who became the youngest goal scorer in Euro's history. And uh, Danny Olmo wiping out the lead which Randall Colomuani had given the French team in the ninth minute. The 2-1 win fired Spain into their fifth European Championship final and gives them a chance to win their fourth title and uh, outright be the most successful team in the competition's history. Now Spain will either face the Netherlands or England who will battle each other in the other semi-final on Wednesday. With us to review this semi-final and also to preview who might join Spain in the final or football analyst Brent Sancho. Uh, Brent, welcome back to the Sportsmax Zone. I saw you working earlier on with the live coverage and uh, you expressed some disappointment about France's overall quality that they displayed, even though it was expected that Spain had come in as favorites. Yeah, I did. And good afternoon, Lance and to Tamara and the rest of your viewers. I, I did. Uh, I was very disappointed because they got into those areas, didn't they? In the second half in particular, they got themselves into good areas. Uh, they, they let themselves down with uh, poor quality of crossing, uh, poor decision making. Uh, and in instances when they do get in uh, and probably just need to pass the ball at the back of it, Mbappe had an opportunity, he skied his, Theo Hernandez had one on his weaker right foot. Uh, and overall, the quality that you expect from an offensive side of things from a French team just wasn't there today. Uh, and we spoke so much coming into this game of how good Spain was, but there were also those conversations about how good France can be when they're clicking. Uh, and we saw that probably for the first 10, 15 minutes, of course, they went a goal up. But after that, it was all downhill for them. Second half, as I said, they created when they were chasing the game. The opportunities were there for them. But I just saw that that quality that you would expect from a French team just wasn't there today. Yeah, and I, I remember when I watched the Spain-Germany match, it was such a high-quality game that I felt while watching the game that the winner of that match would go on probably to win to, re, to win Euro. Mariah spoke at the top of the show about Spain's quality and the fact that it has so much to do with, with the young talent shining. Um, a real good look this for Spain in the, uh, from a future standpoint about what they may offer in the years to come. Yeah, and I think what's uh, really exciting about it is that uh, they're seeing the future right now. Because when you look at Lamine Yamal play, he plays like a footballer that's been involved in the game for a long, long time. And not only he has the attributes, drops his shoulder, good strength, great 1v1 ability, speed, agility. He also has an unbelievable calm on the football, uh, an unbelievable uh, ability to make the right decisions. Very rarely you see him make wrong decisions on the pitch. Uh, and you add that to Nico Williams on the other side, who is there and thereabouts as to what Lamina Yal Mal can do. You just think to yourself, yes, the future looks bright, but the, the, the brightness of that future is shining right now for Spain. And when you look at this tournament, uh, and a tournament uh, that really struggled to show high quality on the offensive side, here comes two youngsters for a Spanish team uh, sometimes is criticized for just possessing the ball in their tika taka they have a real bite offensively and it's very difficult to see how you can stop them yeah and after today's match and you know what he's done for barcelona it i think it's fair to say that dem the demands for Lamina Mal will be very, very high. And one of the things, Brent, that really stood out for me, because it's one thing to be young and to be talented, but his composure has really knocked me off my feet because he's been so composed for a 16-year-old. It's as if he knows exactly what he needs to do, where he needs to be at the right time, and just the way he goes about doing it, not like the regular 16-year-old. <laughs> Certainly not like the regular 16-year-olds. And, and for our viewers here in the Caribbean, Lamin Amal would have, if, if he lived here in Trinidad, he would probably be going to Naparima College or Prez or maybe Fatima. Wow, uh, thank he'd you. Probably, uh, he'd probably be playing schoolboy football. But uh, that just tells you uh, mm -hmm. the level and, of course, the expectation. You're right, there is going to be a high demand. He is a, a star player for Barcelona currently. And he is certainly leading the Spanish team. And in this goal here, he had one thing in his mind, and that was putting that ball in that area. I don't think there's many in world football can do it. He did have two or three defenders in presence with him, but he had the composure. He had, of course, the skill set to put the ball there. He, you, and as you rightfully said, in all the decision, even there was a decision he made with about 10 minutes to go in the game, 
when he made a professional foul when I believe it was uh, Griezmann or one of the French players who were attacking. Yeah. And that in itself was an experienced play. A play from a player that uh, you would think have had at least 40, 50 Spanish caps. And uh, when you look at uh, what he is going to bring, possibly, of course, now being 17 years old when he goes into the finals, it is a scary, scary thought for both the English and the Dutch. Yeah, and I think it's only fitting that we juxtapose Lamine Yamal against Kylian Mbappe, a man who also made his name at a very, very young age. You know, now he's a bit older when we compare him to players like Lamine Yamal, but today Kylian Mbappe got the opportunity. But I felt like he lacked that magic. He lacked that magic when it mattered the most. What say you, Brent? Yeah, it was a tough tournament uh, for Mbappe, and I don't think it necessarily is fair uh, to label him uh, as uh, a failure uh, after this tournament. I think he just had a poor tournament. I may point back to that, uh, of course, broken nose or fractured nose that he had. He just looked like he never settled. There's reports in the French uh, newspaper that he also carrying a back injury. Uh, he, everything and every movement that he made just did not seem fluid. It didn't seem Mbappe-like. And of course, I'm, I'm putting up that up against the, his performance in the World Cup Finals where he scored a hat-trick. It wasn't that Kylian Mbappe that you saw. But it also, Mariah, it wasn't that French team that we saw as well. They, they looked stagnant in their approach, although they did make a couple of tactical changes coming into this game. No Griezmann uh, and went with a more a, a more pragmatic, a, a more a front foot approach, I should say, not pragmatic, but front foot approach. And it still didn't really give them the fluidity that you would expect. Uh, and that is something and some concern for French, uh, for French footballers or French uh, fans, uh, because you have to wonder Where's that fluidity? How is it going to come uh, moving forward? Because it certainly wasn't there in the Euros. Yeah, definitely not there. And I was also shocked when I didn't see Antoine Griezmann in that starting lineup. But I want to make this point, Brent, about Spain having numerous goal scorers. They had nine different goal scorers in this Euros competition already so far. And it just speaks again to the volume, you know, the depth of this team. And a name that we didn't even mention in the discussion just yet, the man who is running for that golden boot um, discussion, Danny Olmo. He has three goals so far. And the other uh, players that are tied with him on three goals, they don't have any more games to play. So you know what that means. Danny Olmo <laughs> is really tipped for that um, golden boot. And he also has been brilliant. Yeah, what an outstanding. And you have to add, of course, he is someone that is replacing the injured Pedri. So he didn't start in a couple oh, of the yeah. games uh, and has come into this team and, and has fit in uh, like a glove. Uh, he's, his movement, I have to mention as well, I know we're talking about goal scorers, Mariah, but I must mention, and I did this in the broadcast as well for the game, the performance of that man there in your picture, Fabian Ruiz, in tandem with Rodri. They have been outstanding. Their movement, their creativity, their line-breaking passes, their decision-making has allowed the Nico Williams, has allowed the Danny Amas, has allowed the media Mal to be able to express themselves in rooms and areas that they are dangerous. And so because of those two, in particular, Fabian Ruiz and Rodri, they make Spain tick. There is absolutely nothing else in that team other than those two that allow Spain to play the type of football that they play. And when you reflect back in this tournament, yes, Yamal and Nico Williams and maybe even Danny Olmo may get the, the plaudits, you're going to have to look and dissect the performance of Rodri and Fabio Ruiz. It has been special and it has been outstanding. Brent, uh, Kylian Mbappe has, he has a personality that makes people feel strongly about him. And of course, his public spat with, with PSG's um, hierarchy um, and, you know, sort of, uh, magnify the point that I'm, I'm making. His post-game comment here, I'm seeing here where he said, in football, you're good or not good. I wasn't good. My Euro was a failure. How do you read those post-tournament comments from Kylian Mbappe? Yeah, I, I think any player that uh, is in the elk that he is, we describe him as arguably one of the best footballers in the world currently. Uh, and, and, and of course, that is over the, the, the fact that uh, we have seen a decline in Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo. Uh, and when you talk about best footballers in the world, he's one of the names that pop up. Uh, and to, to the standards that he set, he's correct. He, he did have a poor tournament. 
what I'm happy about Lance, he has not made any excuses. Very easy to suggest a face mask. He talked, uh, there's a lot of talk about it not being adjusted. Of course, in today's game, he didn't play with it. Uh, a broken nose, I've, I've had one, is one of the most uncomfortable things to play with in sport. Uh, breathing is an issue. He could have come up with all sorts of excuses. He could have blamed even Didier Deschamps and some of the, the, the uh, of course, uh, tactical approaches that he has made and the lack of firepower that he is uh, ably assisted with. But he hasn't done that. He's pointing the finger right back at him because he understands that he is the French superstar and he had a poor tournament. So I'm quite happy that he's gone down that road. There's a lot of good things to come from Kylian Mbappé. I'm very sure this is not the end of this French team because there's a lot of young talent in that team as well. Yeah, which is why I put the question to you, Brent, because he reminds me a little bit of Rafa Nadal, who has been bothered by injuries pretty much all of his, uh, the latter part of his his tennis career and he re very rarely points to injuries when he when he loses matches and uh, what I wanted to get from you is the fact that a lot of players in the moment of disappointment that Mbappe would be enduring at the moment would, would rather not say something like that to attract even more negative attention to himself so I think it, it was a, a big man kind of statement putting his hand up to say uh, he knew and he accepts that he fell below par. Yeah, and, and you looked at that opportunity that just uh, that flashed across the screen, and that's it there. That that chance, it's the nine times out of ten, Mbappe puts that into the back of it. We've seen him do it for PSG, we've seen him do it for France on many occasions, but it just wasn't there. That spark wasn't there. Uh, that ability to, to, to create uh, wasn't there. Albeit, of course, he, he was exceptional for the first French school uh, in, in that measured cross uh, that he put into the box of Mouani. But outside of that, he played at the peripherals. He, he was almost non-existent. Uh, and it's not the type of performance you would expect from a superstar. And we've seen two tournaments, both the Copa and the Euros, and a lot of question marks have been put up against superstars. We talked about Ronaldo's performance. We talked about uh, Harry Kane's performance in this tournament. We talked about uh, Cristiano Ronaldo's uh, performance, Lionel Messi in the Copa, uh, Vinicius Jr. in the Copa. Because, Lance, that's what it's all about. That's what sports is about when you are a top build player. You are expected to perform every single game. And that's the standard set by a prime day Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo. And these guys have to live in that shadow. Yeah, the Netherlands will battle the England team in the second semi-final tomorrow, uh, Brent. Um, talk to me quickly about uh, England's chances in this match because... There's been a lot of narrative about Southgate's performance as the coach, and I've heard him heavily criticized. And uh, there are people who go as far as to say that they are into the semi final in spite of Southgate's um, strateg strategies that he has used and not, and not because of, because there's a feeling that Ingl England's roster is good enough to take them all the way, but Southgate just hasn't been brave enough as the team's ta tactician. Look, he has. He has had a poor tournament, Gareth Southgate. And you just go back to the, the Trent uh, Arnold uh, experiment that he had in the middle of the park. He brought in uh, Gallagher and brought him back off. He only played a couple minutes. He's brought a Luke Shaw that's now fit. He kept Kieran Trippier out there despite some mediocre performances. So you can go through all the games, and yes, I do agree that he's had a poor performance. But many would say to you, in sports, he's still in there. He's still in with a puncher's chance. He's in a semi-final tomorrow. There's absolutely nothing uh, that would suggest that England can't go all the way. However, there are cracks within that team. They have limbered, uh, they have labored, sorry, to the semi-finals, uh, and they have not put in a performance as of date to suggest that they could go on to win this tournament. Uh, and I think when you put all those pieces together, uh, you just feel that this English team uh, needs something of a miracle tomorrow. And I, I say that with all due respect to them, simply because they just haven't performed to be able to get into it. There was a lot of talk about the French team as well, Lance, and their poor, poor performances. And they still didn't live up to that billing expected to beat the Spanish. The question is going to be asked by the English team, similar to the French, can they do it? And I just don't think from a team chemistry perspective to be able to just flick that light switch on at this high level and high stake is possible. And, and I think it'll be very difficult again for the English tomorrow. And, and finally, what is it about the Netherlands team that you feel tactically could hurt, could hurt England? I think it's just their flexibility. Their flexibility in terms of the types of players that they can bring onto the field uh, that could change a game in a minute's notice. Uh, their ability, of course, to be resolute defensively and very strong in those areas. 
uh, and, and the ability to grind out results. I, I do think Puma, from a coaching perspective, as we on that topic, has had a good tournament so far. And I can see him tactically adjusting uh, in a way that could give Holland the impetus to go on and win that game. And uh, I just feel that within all the, of the Dutch squad, there's enough in there to beat uh, an England squad. All right, Brent, thanks, man. We'll watch how that one pans out. The second semi-final, Spain already getting through today, defeating neighbours, France, and through to the final. Uh, tomorrow at this time, we'll know who their opponents will be in the final. Thanks, Brent. And, uh, Have a we'll great be... one, guys. Right, you great. too. And we'll be back with more on the Sportsmax Zone after this. <laughs> yeah.